Okay. Well, first I want to say welcome. So glad you're here. My name is Janet, and she'll introduce herself, but it's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And it's a special time because the Lord has something for us. And of course, we know that it's victory in prayer because you're very important people. And he wants to show you how you're going to get the victory. And that's going to be a special time. And we're both going to, we never did this before, back and forth. So be patient with us. I don't know about the live stream. That's kind of difficult to think about. But anyway, welcome. And we are going to believe that we are going to know and we're going to grow in Jesus and have victory. So the purpose will be to learn some basic principles that form the foundation so that you can get started and you will know that God is hearing your prayers. So we'll just pay attention, and I know the Lord will speak to each one of us, and that's a good thing. So we'll have ears to hear and a heart to listen and an eyes to believe as we look around. So we know that it's one thing to sign a prayer card, and how many of us have done that? Sign a prayer card. It's another thing to commit to prayer, but to actually pray, that's what's hard. So that's what we're gonna talk about, how we can get started. So we have a lot to say tonight. Maybe some will kind of be shocking how we started our prayer journey and different things, how we even met and got together. That's another story. God is in it all. We just have to trust him. So let me just open with prayer. Father, I am so happy to be here knowing that you're here. I just pray for every person that they came because they want the victory. They want the victory in prayer. And Father, we know all that you are, and more than that, all that you want us to be, to stand in the gap, to believe, and to trust you for your promises. So tonight, open our ears and our hearts to listen. We love you, Lord, and we're going to trust you for it all because there is victory in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I have to say something before she's introduced because victory in prayer. So what happens, I don't read it every day, but um, one line stood out to me as I read Oswald today, the utmost for his highest, and here's what it said. It is a shameful thing for a Christian to talk about getting the victory. The victor ought to have got us so completely that it's his victory all the time. And we are more than conquerors through him. I didn't have much to say after that. Hi, my name is Barb, for those of you who don't know me. And um, I just want to say, whatever we share during these sessions, and there's four of them, that it's from our hearts and those things that the Lord has just been dealing with us on and working with us in and on, and, and so that we might know him more deeply and intimately, that there might be that personal um, fellowshipping and, and walk with God, and which is so important. And so we named tonight Know and Grow. So the knowing is knowing Jesus in a deep and an intimate way, which means um, intimate, that's, it's just a deeper, it's a deep relationship. It's a one-on-one, um, -on -one, you can speak of the marriage relationship, because the Lord wants us to be one with him. And so it's really, this is what the Lord dropped in my heart some years ago as I was beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, to seek him. He said, salvation 
isn't just an experience. It's the beginning of a love relationship that builds and grows as daily you seek me in the word and prayer. And that really just was kind of written on my heart because I'd been a worker in the church for so many years. I mean, I was a Martha, I was a real Martha. And I loved God and I gave my heart to the Lord when I was uh, 13. And, and a lady down the block from where we lived was a Christian. She went to a Pentecostal church and she invited us to go. Not that we went right away, but she invited us and she was very kind. She was a very kind lady. And so one night, my, uh, one of my sisters, one the older than I am, <laughs> my younger sister's here tonight, one of them. <laughs> There's six, there were six of us. Well, anyway, um, one Sunday night, my sister Jeanette was going to go to the movies. And she decided uh, to go to church instead. And we actually walk, lived within walking distance of the church, so she went, and she got saved. So she came home and shared it with all of us, and we all eventually ended up going to church. So they had a big increase of uh, seven, eight people, <laughs> and we all kind of filled a row. And so um, I didn't, I wasn't out in the world because from 13 to 84, I'm working and serving the Lord and in his house as best as I can. But something changed in there when my husband passed away. So, but before I tell you that, part of my testimony actually, am I getting ahead? No. Um, I just thinking of reasons why you have come tonight. We're so glad you're here. And I just wrote some of them down. And one of them is, um, and I woke up in the middle of the night with this word, and I knew that I, I needed to write it down, because even though it was one word, you can forget it by morning. And it's the word hollow. Some of you are feeling hollow. And like there, there's something, you know you're missing something, and you need it, and you know it's important, and you don't know how to get it. You don't know how to get that filling. And, and God wants to fill you, and God wants you to know how to, to get to know him deeply and intimately and grow in him. Because some of you feel like you're stuck, and that you haven't grown, and you haven't gotten any further than you were two years ago or whenever, and God has more. There's always more. And it's the call of God to the heart. It's actually a love call to the heart because we're working on then a love relationship. <clears throat> Prayer isn't a duty or something rote, mine was for years, but it's, it's that working as we give our heart to the Lord and he gives us all of our heart, then we're working on a relationship. And he, he longs for us, and he wants to meet us. And there's that, just that call, the call of the Spirit to the heart, from God's heart, meet me. Meet me. He wants to meet you and have that personal relationship. So now some of you, you feel like you're spinning your wheels. I mean, there's all kinds of different feelings in here. And tonight, as Janet and I share our testimonies, you're going to see, and most of you know, we're very different. <laughs> and... Uh, but then yet the Lord connected us in the same apartment building. And in prayer, and Jan will probably share more of that. But um, God has more for you tonight. And he sees your hearts. And your heart is hungry. And it's thirsty. And he said, come, come and, and drink and eat. And we'll explain more about that, too. But I just want you to know, if I can see, through my Bible goes here, um, be encouraged. Some of you are discouraged. Be encouraged. There's help and there's hope in Jesus. And we're going to keep this simple. And my sister Gertie always tells me, put the cookies on the bottom shelf, you know, so that people understand and they get them and don't go overboard. So with that, I'm going to introduce my sister because she happens to be here tonight. Gertie, would you stand, please? <laughs> my sister Gertie, right out. And... She is a missionary evangelist, um, was married for 
long time. <laughs> and her husband uh, passed away about three years ago. And they pastored for many years in northern Michigan district and then have been missionaries um, for how many years? 22. And she's going to be going on her 48th mission trip. She's still uh, speaking and teaching and that. So she's a very powerful woman of God. So please shake her hand before you leave because you'll be blessed, okay? So now Janet's going to come and she's going to share and then I'll be back. Uh, we're different. You know that. And before I go out and rub, uh, what do you call them, rabbit trails, I have to have some real points. Otherwise, I can keep on going. If you know me, I talk a lot and I have a lot of expression. But I think uh, when you hear how I started so totally different than her, uh, you just see if there's people in your family or even yourself, you'll think, you know what? I'm not too old to keep it going. And that's what we want. So my very first time that I thought about prayer was I was asked to be the chaplain at Job's Daughters. I didn't know a prayer from nothing, okay? But I'll never forget it. And you can say or somebody can say, oh, that's a bad organization. I didn't know anything, but God used that because I'll never forget that ever in my life. And so the very first time, because there's a Bible right in the middle, a table in two chairs that look like throne chairs, and I'm walking and you walk and then you go right to the middle in front of the Bible and you kneel and all I did was cry. I don't even know what happened to me after that. But I'll never forget that. And I look at that, it was my first exposure, prayer. I didn't know. I went to church, went to church every Sunday. And generally I came home, uh, Evangelical United Brethren who changed to the Methodist. And I don't know what they are. And I, I don't know how that goes. But it was just so interesting what evolved from all that. Okay, I went to church, I went to Sunday school. And I, and now you have to understand, at 82, you have a very 166 years of oldies, but, well, we don't know if they're all goodies, but we've been around, okay? <laughs> That's a long time, and we're still going strong. But when I moved to Marquette, and I start, I didn't know what it was, but I was sleeping a lot, and I was a mess. I just remember trying to fill my life with things. And my husband said, well, we better go to Marshfield. Uh, you know, you got a problem. And all I did is want to sleep, okay? I remember going to Marshfield and going through all the tests, and they said, you need shock treatments. It's so deep. I didn't even know what they're talking about, okay? But I said, no, no, I, I don't, I'm not having no shock treatments. And evolved from there many, many things. Um, the next thing I remember was being invited for lunch, and there was a bunch of women, this is still in Marquette, and I must have been talking how I was feeling, and I still remember the woman. And she, her name was Jan also. And she said, I'm going to pray for you. That shocked me. I'm like, someone is going to pray for me? What's that about? I'm just telling you, I didn't start out just coming here and talking, OK? So anyway, after that, lots of things gave me to think about. OK, at the Christian Women's Club, someone invited me. And it was at the Holiday Inn in Marquette. All I remember is the woman talking about different things. I thought, that sounds like me. And she, I guess, I don't remember the day I got saved that day. Because then I hungered and thirst for the word of God. 
and it was really something. Um, I went to an ELC Lutheran church in Marquette, Michigan, and my husband was the head of everything and always doing something for the church, and they had what they called koinonia groups, where they had fellowship, and then you would gather, and they gathered at our house, he led it, and before they left, this was Jacques, here, we all had to stand in a circle because we were gonna pray. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't think I had to open my mouth. I would leave. I always had something I had to leave, okay? That's how I started. I've come a long way. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I started. So the next thing that happened, the Lutheran women had at Fortune Lake, Wisconsin, in Iron River, Wisconsin, they had a ladies half week. And I went with my friends, Cindy Cowan and Steve Cowan. Their son came to church here about two or three months ago. He lives in Brooksville. He might come next week. Well, anyway, she's the first one, her and her husband, I led to the Lord. He was vice president of a bank, and they both left. They're both ministers, Lutheran ministers, filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, but they're both in retirement now and do chaplaincies and different things. That was the beginning. When I went with those women, and it was summer, I still remember, it was the middle of June, and we, they said, if anybody wants to go outside, um, they're gonna pray. I thought, Cindy, let's go see what that's about. So there was one of these long benches, and here's all the women there, and there were Lutheran pastors' wives. They're talking about the blood of Jesus. I'm like, what are they talking about? And so afterward, we got up the courage and said, can we talk to you? Oh, yeah. After supper tonight, you come and talk to us. So, okay. So Cindy and I go in the mess hall. And so Cindy has always been, as far as I knew, an epileptic. So the Lutheran pastor's wife gathered around us, and they said, is there any need? So she says, I'm an epileptic. My mother's always prayed for me. Now, you got to believe, I don't know what's going on, okay? So they gather around her in the name of Jesus, come out or something like that. Boing, her head hits the picnic table. I'm like, oh, God, what is this? I'm telling you, uh, that's how it started. And I'm like, and then she started to speak in tongues. I'm like, oh, my goodness sakes. Then pretty soon they said, what about you? Well, I didn't know if I go under the table, run outside or what. I never saw anything like it. So anyway, they prayed for me. Nothing happened to me. So we're walking back, and she's can hardly, she's speaking around. And I'm like, oh, Cindy, that was in June. But I saw something there that I knew I needed. And on my own, I would just keep praying, fill me with the Holy Spirit, fill me, I want. And God sees each one of your hearts too, that you need the power of the Holy Spirit, because I did see something different in them. So anyway, I was filled all by myself someday in November, and I do remember that. So that was the real beginning. I was part of a GLOW. I had prayer meetings at my house. Young people came with their babies. I had Bible studies, and I had uh, prayer meetings, uh, not at the church. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't have a lot of prayer. It was in the Lutheran church. And then the most unbelievable thing happened to me. Uh, my daughter came with a granddaughter, and we were, I can just see us, Highway 28, and had a knock on the door and it was the sheriff, divorce papers. I'm like, Lord, it was the most heart-wrenching thing um, because here you think everything's all right and maybe some of you can relate to some of this, but I'm just glad my daughter, granddaughter, anyway, I can't go into it all, but God used that and even though that was a long time, I don't think I told anyone for three or four months. I just talked to the Lord and said, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand any of it. 
Okay, so then, after he left, he got an apartment, I stayed in the house, and I had a diagnosis because I was having trouble walking, I couldn't get out of the car, and I just had such pain in my back. And so I went to the doctor, and they start with a TENS unit or whatever. They do all those things for pain. And they said, I wasn't getting, nothing helped. So they take an x-ray and say to me that I have two tumors in my back. Two tumors in the base, in the sacrum, something. And then I probably would end up in a wheelchair. And I said, no, God. No, I'm not going to be in a wheelchair. And I even remember being at Good News Assembly of God in Ishpeming, still getting to church. Sometimes I would kind of lay in the pew. They were wooden pews like that. But I keep trusting the Lord. I remember family taking me to Detroit, x-rays sent out to California to find out what they could do for me and said the only way they knew would to be to go in my stomach and go through because of where they are. No, no, no. And I, I can't say when it happened, but it was gradually. I feel I'm totally healed. Okay. But I do know one thing. If I do too much, that would mean cleaning or getting on my hands and knees. I can feel it, okay? So God is my healer also. So that was real special. Now here's the good part. I call my daughter and tell her all these things. And she said, Mom, there's some, she, my daughter is a secretary at Brookfield, was it Brookfield then? Brookfield Assembly of God. And uh, she said, Mom, we're putting you on a prayer cha chair, a prayer chair. Yeah, I need to be on a prayer chair. I'm going to put you on the prayer chain. But there's a lady here that she, she's just like you. Her name is Barbara Bladel. Oh, really? She's the head of missions, was it? Secretary for missions, they have got to meet. Okay, I, all I can say, that's another long story. Pretty soon after that, see, I can get a, ahead of myself. So I have to wait a little bit now. Um, but that was the beginning of our relationship and talking on the phone and different things like that. Later on, a little off here, but her sister and her came to my apartment and she put her no, um, application in. See, I need her help. <laughs> Fort, 14 years we help one another when you're in the 80s. Someone's got to help. Jesus, I know he does. So anyway, it all worked, even though um, they gave her, they said it'd be a while, but we prayed together for 14 years. So anyway, I'd go back and forth to Kenosha when I lived in Marquette, because my mother was very ill, she was diagnosed, oh my goodness, with everything, anxiety, bipolar, long story short, um, she went into a community-based residential facility, but things happened, and uh, they said she had to be moved. So as I was coming home from Kenosha one, one night, and I think it was a Friday night. I still remember coming into Marquette, Michigan, at the top of the hill. There was a church over here, and I looked down, and there were all lights, and it was dark. And the Lord said, let the dead bury the dead. What? He was taking me to Kenosha. My, Kenosha. My mother, and you're thinking, oh, oh boy. Well, anyway, that was another thing. I moved, I was actually, I had a wonderful little job from probate court being um, the guardian conservator for the courts and for every person I took care of, I got $50. And it was just, it was such a special time of learning for me. So what was interesting how this all worked was that that weekend, Pastor Ron Auk was in Ishpeming doing a prayer seminar. So I decided to go. So I go, and I told him, the first person I told, I'm going to be moving to Kenosha. Really? Yeah. I, I'm going to go to your brother's church, Pastor Barry at Cornerstone, because he, he, he was 
traveling. He said he's a hard one, but he prayed. I said, oh, that uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So anyway, uh, that's how that happened. I moved to Kenosha, and there was prayer before the services. Um, I moved into my mother's house uh, because it was for sale, but I knew because she was at the facility, she needed now to go to the nursing home. And it sold, and one day I moved to the towers, and here I am at Prayer House. And that's just a little bit, but just to encourage you. So one of the differences is I gave my heart to the Lord when I was 13, and Janet was in her 40s. But anyway... Um, we want you to just get a basic foundation here on what you're going to come to, come to, from to pray. So you did receive a little card when you came in, and it has a verse on it, the smaller card, Luke 11, 18. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, that was a prayer request of the disciples to Jesus. They wanted to know how to pray. They, they had seen prayer, and they, they knew what it was. They saw the Pharisees and Sadducees praying. But they wanted to know how Jesus prayed, because it wasn't like the Pharisees or the Sadducees. So Jesus said, in his answer to them, he said, when you pray, enter into your closet and shut the door, and your Father, who sees in secret, sees you in that place by yourself, will reward you openly. said, because the Pharisees and Sadducees, they pray standing on the street corners, praying long prayers, probably very eloquent, you know, and all that. And, and the Lord said, but they have their reward. And so what was he talking about? The reward of, of the answered prayer. They, their reward was we want to be seen and we want to be heard. But Jesus said, I want you to go to a place where nobody sees you. This is this place of you and I. And I see your heart, and he would be working on the hearts. But he, he wanted them to know that there was a, a relationship that was going to be built there that was going to be different than the Pharisees and Sadducees who had no power, they had no authority, and was all outward because inward they were full of dead men's bones and whatever else. So the call to the Lord from our hearts, I want it to be during these four weeks, is this very thing, Lord, teach me to pray. And I just want us to read it together and put the emphasis on teach and put, your, put me in there, okay? Lord, teach me to pray. And, you know, it's just a sentence, and you can be saying it, um, off, often during the day, you can just shoot it up to the Lord. Lord, teach me to pray. It's a longing. But that longing is there because God is, is calling to your heart because he wants you to know him. He wants you to know him in the word and in prayer, in the fellowship and the supping and um, that coming to him. So that's, that's our main scripture for this, uh, these weeks. And um, now I'm going to finish my testimony because the rest of it will fit in with that. So when, you, when you're a worker and you don't really, <clears throat> excuse me, know God, you depend a lot on your flesh. And um, you can get pretty tired <laughs> because your flesh has to think everything up. But there came a time in my life when... Um, well, I got married. I went to Bible school. I came home, and I married a man from the church, a very wonderful man. And he had a great personality, and he, and he had a sense of humor. And everybody really loved him. And uh, he worked for a skylight company. And I'm not going to put a lot of details in here so that you fall asleep or something. But he worked for a skylight company, and he was a perfectionist. So what he did, he, it was done right. And oftentimes they would send him to do corrections on other jobs that weren't. And um, for you, uh, those of you who are old enough and remember Frank Lord Wright, the architect, he would 
ask for him. If he put a skylight in a building or in a home, he would ask for him. So here we have a man flying all over the United States working on different types of um, skylights and buildings and on the Mitchell Park domes, he worked on those. So one day <coughs> he was just working on a house and it had a shake shingle roof and there were roofers up there too and he was almost finished with the job and wanted to get home so he, he got in the job early the next morning and um, they, from the people going up and down to the roof they had brought you know dirt up there and that and it had rained during the night so when he went up there, there was, it was mud and he didn't see it getting off the ladder onto the roof and he slipped and fell. And he didn't fall off the roof, but enough to really injure one side. And so he managed to finish that job and so on, and he came home. But from that point, he never really worked again. And so for 11 years, a man who traveled all over was shut down. And we took him, we went to many doctors, then we went to Marshfield, then we went to Mayo. And when you can't see something on an x-ray, then they, they don't know what or how to help you. And so um, one day he took his own life. And those of you who know how hard it is when someone dies, especially your marriage partner, because that's the person you're, you're one with, but when it's this kind of, kind of death, um, it's also a shock. And as I found him, um, it was just as if, almost immediately, as if there was no barrier between heaven and me. And I just, it was God. And as I was hurrying in to call the police, I looked up and I said, God, you're real. And it wasn't that I didn't know God was real, but to me in that situation, it was just um, an encounter with God. And I'm saying that tonight because there's some of you in here that you're questioning, God, are you real? Are you really there? Do you really hear me? Is this, what do I do? I, you know, I don't seem to really know you, and how can I do that? Well, that um, encounter, and I almost hesitated telling you because sometimes we want uh, something, you know, really dramatic to happen. And um, I'm not really too much of a dramatic person, like someone, <laughs> like someone we know. <laughs> so anyway, God chooses how he, he reveals, but he, he will reveal himself, mostly through his word and as we seek him. But anyway, when that time of the funeral and that was over and I went home to my house and there I was alone and in this house. It was a house on a hill we could see for miles. A Cadillac in the garage. I mean, you know. And it was like I sat in my chair which became my prayer chair and I again looked up to heaven and I said, God, I don't know you. I don't know you in the word and in prayer. You know, I know about you, but I really don't know you. And I just felt that lack, and I felt that long in my heart. And then I made a decision, and I said, but I want to. I want to know you. And so I decided that the next day I was going to get up, and I was going to start with prayer. And I had done that through the years, only it was like this road thing, read streams in the desert, read a little scripture, offer up a prayer and go on your way. And it was, there was no connection. There was no um, building of a relationship. So I did start that way. And I'm still continuing on that way. But at first I thought, well, I'll pray 15 minutes. Because 15 minutes sounded like a lot of time to me. And it was at first. And I um, bought a little notebook which I put somewhere here, here it is. And I started um, just writing down my requests, which was basically my family and a missionary. <laughs> and it didn't change much from week to week, believe me. But I, I didn't know, I didn't know how to start or how to pray. And I was like Janet, if 
if they were calling me to pray in church, I was probably fainted or something. So you see, um, there's beginnings and there's startings, but it's God's call. And I knew I was answering a call then. And some days when it was hard to get up and I was kind of dragging my way to the prayer, my prayer place, all I could say was, I'm coming, I'm coming, because I knew he was going to meet me there. And, and I just want to say this, that there's a lot of ordinary days in your prayer closet. But that doesn't mean God isn't there, because he sees your heart, and he knows what needs to happen, and I need my Kleenex. <laughs> but anyway... Don't get discouraged. You just keep pressing in because there's a building and a planting and a growing. And our, our theme tonight is know and grow. And if you want to know God and you want to grow in God, then there's some things that we do. And we don't do them half-heartedly or inconsistently. You have to take yourself sometimes by the nab of the neck and get yourself into that place of prayer. But it has to be like, Lord, is, is this my priority? I'm talking about eternal uh, life. Am I working on anything in that area, or am I so concerned with everything here, when I'm not, what's not happening, or it might not happen, or whatever, that you're kind of on the back burner or something? But I sense tonight that you're here because you want to know God, and you want to grow. And the, in the kingdom of God, things are growing. Did you notice that? And the Lord even speaks of his word as a seed that's planted in the heart. So how many seeds have you planted? Now, I'm not saying that to make you feel bad, but just think about it. Do we read just the scriptures that are going to help us, or do we really want to know God? And you know what I found? That um, if, you, if you want to really know God, oops, <laughs> you want to know him from Genesis, to Revelation. You know, at first, I, did, I wasn't reading through the Word every year. And um, because, you know, it's prayer and the Word. It's always prayer and the Word. It's never just the Word or just prayer. And so uh, if, you, if you don't do both, then you're, it's kind of, you're going to be out of balance. And you won't really know God. And so it was easier for me to... Um, to pray than to read, and I had this little thing from Bible Pathways that you had to check off every day where you read, and sometimes I was like, oh, I missed a day or something, you know, you had to catch up, and my front tooth would start hurting because when I'm stressed, my front tooth hurts. Well, anyway, it's my, it's my indicator, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. But anyway, the first year I made it all the way through, I was so excited. I felt like standing up on a table and saying, I did it, you know. And one thing that spurred it on was our pastor went around the audience and he said, how many times have you read the Bible this year? And then he'd put it to someone. I thought, oh, I hope he doesn't come and ask me because that was before I ever read it through. And he asked one man and he said 10 times, 10, this is my 10th time. I thought, oh, he read through the Bible 10 times. And it's like, but it encouraged me, you know, he can do it. I need to do it. And God helps us. But there has to be um, a determination in the heart, you know? I know that's what happened when I said to God, I don't know you, but I want to. There was just something that rose up in me, a determination. You know, I can, and we don't go by feelings, but it's there today. God. I want to know you. We don't ever stop learning because we're disciples and learners. So every day is important in our learning process. So a verse that became very, very special to me about knowing God is the one we've given you. It's on the bigger card. Just want to go through that with you. Okay. Let's read it together. For my determined purpose is that I may know him and that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly 
and more clearly. That's not the end of that verse, but that's all I could handle when I first started. It said anything about suffering, I didn't hear, I was, oh no. So all I really knew was my determined purpose is that I, that I may know him and that I progressively may, be, may become more deeply acquainted with him. And it is a process. It's a process. And, you know, things can happen on the way and we get discouraged. Um, but we just have to know that as we consistently, consistently plant the seed, consistently go to that place of prayer, answer that call of love, it's a love relationship. It's not just we, we accepted the Lord and that's it. And every other thing that you do for God will flow from that place of prayer and the word. And um, I just don't want you to be discouraged and, and know that you start small. Don't despise the day of smallness. And you know what? We're going to be real honest with each other in these meetings. And we can admit, look, I don't even have a prayer closet. And I don't have a place to have a prayer closet. And you know what? If we really want to do something, we're going to do it, right? I mean, we're going to find a way, no matter what. And so you can too, and it's possible. And so I just encourage you, because tonight, in a little bit, I don't want you to sign this card yet. And maybe you never will, but I pray you will. But I, we're going to just take time, and I want you to think about it, because it's the most important thing you'll ever do, get to know God. And Jesus, in, in, um, in John chapter 17, that was his last prayer, that we might know him, as he know, said, as I know the Father, the Father in me, I in the Father, you in me. He wanted that oneness. And he said, it's my desire that you would be with me. That's why he came and gave his life. He wants us to be with you. His desire is for you. No matter what you think or feel, no matter how you've been rejected by people or anything, his desire is for you. And his plan is good. After my husband passed away, I remember coming out of, <coughs> excuse me, coming out of church one Sunday and one of the men from church, he was from Poland, he had a little accident. And it was a cold winter day, and I was hurrying to my car, and he said, Barbara, all things, all things work together for good. And I said, in my heart, I said, easy for you to say. You've got a wife and children, you know. But I knew he was correct. And I wrote out just that part, all things work together for good, and I put it by my bedstand. And that was such a help to me, because we have our own plans and our own thoughts, and yet God has the master plan for your life. And even though you don't like parts of it, or you like something to be different, only he knows what you need to draw you unto himself and, and, and make you desperate for him. And um, I just want to say this, squeeze this in here, about my sister Gertie. And her husband, they pastored many years up north with five children. And the church was small, and the offerings aren't terrific. And um, Harry had to work. He wanted, of course, woodwork. And he worked, um, always worked. And so Gertie was home. She handled all the calls and all the things that came in every day. And the children, and they didn't have much money, so she made everything from scratch. <laughs> uh, you know, there was no just hurry and get something at the supermarket. And um, she, they were pastoring a church, and if I get this wrong, tell me, Gertie. The church wasn't really going anywhere, right? And so one day she went over to the church and she sat down in the church and, and she said, God, what's wrong with this church? And what did God say, Gertie? What's wrong with you? You think that's hard? No. That was God being honest with her. Just like when my husband's passed away and I'm grieving and everything, you're going to show me my heart, God? It's divided. That's what the Lord showed me. Your heart's divided. We had a preacher come here after, 
during pastors, uh, when he passed away and said to this church, your heart's divided. Does it shake us? Does it mean anything? But what did Gertie do? She went home and started really seeking God. She said, I, I had been sitting in the back row. I was overweight and a few other things. And she just took that serious. And I tell you, this is a powerful woman of God right here, right here. So we, we can make our choices. We can feel sorry for ourselves. She had no one to help her. She had no relatives up there. She had no money or whatever. But all her children are saved, and they're serving the Lord. And they're just in the grandchildren. It's just a pleasure to see them. Not that that's a, it's not a fairy tale. It's the truth. And you would love to meet all of them. So you meet her tonight. But anyway, here we go. So every day, what's important? Every day, we want to plan to meet God. Okay, Jan, I think that's, you're going to, are you going to do the part about that? Yeah. Okay. Then after you finish, we'll do our card. We've got to keep on track. Yes. We could go on and on, but one hour of power is enough to begin with. Um, I just thought it was interesting because she said Bible pathways, and I also did that. And uh, that must have been our era because I don't know if they still have that. Well, we all prepare in such a different way, so you can't, but there's some basic things. But it's all right to be different, you know, that what works with you. But there are some things, and I can tell you um, a little bit, and uh, we'll be talking more each week. But in my heart, I want to know God, and that's why you're here too. We want to know him better. We want to know him greater. We want to be close. We want to hear his voice. So we need to be convinced. Isn't that the first thing? You need each one of you to be convinced God has heard your prayer. Now, there are hindrances, and we'll be talking about that. But when you pray, and we pray different, we can pray soft, we can do this, but be convinced of prayer the importance, the value, and like she mentioned, the word of God, because prayer nurtures your spirit, man. We know what nurtures our body, food, and we love it. Don't we? We all love it. We love those potlucks and all that go with it. But then we might say, I don't know how to start. I, I don't even know where to begin. Well, she had a prayer list. I am not one that writes a lot. I have a hard time hearing and then putting it down before it all sinks in. So that's hard for me. Some can write like Margie. She's a writer and Barbie's a writer and maybe some other. But it's hard for me to write. Um, but I do pick up some things. So we don't know how to start. Well, the first thing I'm purposing, I'm going to make an appointment. I'm a morning person. Everybody isn't a morning person. I've always been a morning person. Get up. I eat first. I know she prays first. I eat first, and I pray. You know, that's all right. Everybody's different. I can't say, I got to be like Barb. I got to be like Jan. No, we're different, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're meeting with God in the way we feel comfortable. So make appointment, and sometimes we're flexible. When I say flexible, I'm saying when you live in a little apartment and you have company and uh, they're in the living room sleeping, my sister's sleeping with me, and they sleep late and you want to get up and it's, uh, anyway, you're flexible. And so we don't beat up on ourselves. Sometimes it's just different than usual, but it's good. Now, the one thing that I do and it's been forever that I always do it because the enemy, the devil, he plays with our mind. Our mind is what he plays with. So as long as I can remember, I ask the Lord, when I put my head on the pillow to take my thoughts, and when I get up in the morning, take my thoughts. Because in Isaiah 26, three, it says, 
those whose mind is stayed on thee, I will give perfect peace because they trust me. Now, there's other things that we're going to do. She'll be talking about that, pulling down strongholds. But when I go to bed, hopefully I haven't got something so serious, but I will talk about something that did happen. I think it might be next week. When you can't sleep, it's really, you know, it bothering you. Okay, some can read a devo, you know, devotional before they start. Some can say a scripture. I have things I do. I'm not going to go into it. That's for me, and it's a progress. I used to, just like she said, sit in a chair. If you got a few words out, you never. But now it's like you want to know God's heart. And, of course, we all want to pray for family. And that's important. But I'll say one thing right now. Pastor Ronnie's back there. There isn't a day that I haven't prayed for the pastoral staff, the wives. And if you aren't doing that, that you need to start to do because they are under more. He just gave me a thumbs up. So he's listening. So you pray for Pastor Ronnie, Heidi, the children, Maria, John, o, Megan, Philip. This is very important. And you'll see they need your prayers. So that's how we, uh, like, we're different. But the one thing that's changed in my life, and I was telling Barbara about this, I wake up and I'm thankful. I never, you know, some people can start singing. I'm not a singer, okay? But I'm just like, I'm so thankful I got up. Thank you, God. And even, you know, sometimes I have headache issues, and I'll say, thank you, Lord. You're going to touch my head and different things. Thank you. My heart wants to be thankful. I want to keep my eyes on Jesus because he is the author. He's the finisher of my faith. So that, for me, is a special thing that I want to be thankful for. And then I always, every day, I ask forgiveness. I start with pride because we're all full of it. You might admit it. You might. And presumptions and different things like that. But every day, ask God to forgive you and begin. One other thing before Barbara will finish and do the capsule. And this, I thought, was so important. So I'm going to uh, read it. Therefore, God doesn't turn away our prayers because he doesn't turn away his own mercy. For that is the foundation of our hope and the fountain of our comforts. And that ought to be the matter of our praises. Amen? Now, I just want to say this. If you don't have a prayer closet, that's okay right now. Just start where you are. Don't say, well, I'm going to pray an hour because it won't happen right away. And then you get discouraged. So if you don't have a closet, please start where you are. You can do five and five or ten and ten, you know, prayer and the word, so that you can grow from that place. And so don't feel bad and just start, begin to start to pray. And then be sure and come back next week. Um, let's see. So it's, remember, it's a process. We need to be determined to do it, to do the prayer things and to um, per, it, seeing it's a love relationship, it's, love pursues. And it's the same for man, men or women. They pursues the object of its love. So when you're determined and you're pursuing and you're intentional, and that's the word the Lord's just been bringing to my mind lately quite a bit, know that God will meet you where you are and you will begin to grow. So I want, just want you to take your... Um, your card here, your scripture card. And just take a few minutes just to look at it and make some decision tonight and ask for the Lord's help if, you, if you've just been struggling. So be, you want it to be your determined purpose above all, to know him. So just quietly sit there. You know, you don't have to sign it tonight. You can sign it tomorrow morning when you all start and for your closet prayer whenever t the time of the day you do. So just take a few minutes and look at that and 
and ponder that. It's very important. You know, I'm just going to put a little capsule on this. Our main scripture in prayer is Luke 11, 1, Lord, teach me to pray. And then our main goal is to know and grow in Jesus. And we do that as we answer the call to prayer, that call of love to your heart to get to know the Lord in the word and prayer each day. There's a growing that comes. And so that you're determined, you're pursuing you realize it's a process. You're starting from the point where you're at tonight, and, and you're going to grow. Now, next week is going to be God's battle plan, God's battle plan. And the next week will be brokenness, which is really important. And I'd like to cover the covenant and mercy on the last one, which also is very important. So we want to thank you for coming. Let me just say a little prayer over you. Father, I thank you for each and every heart that's responded tonight to you and to your call. I pray, God, that you'd strengthen them in their inner man. I pray you'd help them, whatever their situation, that they will determine and press in and press forward to meet you, Lord, in that place of prayer where you wait for them. Teach them, Lord, to pray as their hearts hunger and cry after you. Keep them safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.